Top 18 Celebrity Actors Who Completely Disappeared From Hollywood Ever wonder what happened to those famous faces who once dominated Hollywood? In this video, we're counting down the top 18 celebrity actors who completely vanished from the spotlight. From blockbuster stars to TV icons, these actors were once at the height of their careers, only to seemingly disappear overnight. Join us as we uncover the reasons behind their sudden exits and take a closer look at where they are today. Greta Garbo Greta Garbo, born Greta Lovisa Gustafsson on September 18, 1905, in Stockholm, Sweden, was a legendary actress who became one of Hollywood's most iconic stars during the silent film and early talkie eras. She quickly rose to fame with roles in silent films such as Flesh and the Devil, 1926, and The Temptress, 1926, where her enigmatic beauty and powerful emotive performances captivated audiences worldwide. Garbo's seamless transition to sound films solidified her status as a leading lady, with critically acclaimed roles in classics like Anna Christie, 1930, and Camille, 1936. Despite her immense success, Garbo was known for her deeply private nature, often shunning the public eye and avoiding the typical Hollywood lifestyle. This reclusiveness only added to her mystique, making her one of the most intriguing figures in the entertainment industry. At the height of her career in the early 1940s, Garbo made the surprising decision to retire from acting and retreat from Hollywood altogether, choosing to live a life away from the limelight. This abrupt departure left fans and critics alike yearning for more from the actress who had become a global icon. After her retirement, Greta Garbo lived a quiet life, largely avoiding public appearances and media attention. She resided in New York City for much of her later years and maintained her privacy until her passing on April 15, 1990, at the age of 84. Although she stepped away from the screen, Garbo's influence on cinema endures, with her performances continuing to inspire actors and filmmakers alike. Her legacy as one of the greatest actresses of all time remains firmly entrenched in the annals of film history. If you find this video not interesting enough, hit the like button to save it and watch it later. Gina Davis Gina Davis Born Virginia Elizabeth Davis on January 21, 1956, in Wareham, Massachusetts, is an American actress, producer, and advocate who rose to prominence in the 1980s. She initially captured the public's attention with memorable roles in films like Tootsie, 1982, and The Fly, 1986 where her unique blend of charm and depth established her as a formidable presence in Hollywood. Davis's portrayal in The Accidental Tourist, 1988, earned her an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, cementing her reputation as a versatile and talented performer. In the early 1990s, Davis further solidified her place in cinema history with iconic performances in Thelma and Louise, 1991, and A League of Their Own, 1992. These roles not only showcased her acting prowess, but also highlighted her ability to portray strong, complex female characters, making her a trailblazer for gender representation in film. Despite her significant achievements, Davis encountered challenges in maintaining her momentum in Hollywood as the industry shifted in the late 1990s, leading to a noticeable slowdown in her acting career. Beyond her work on screen, Gina Davis has become a passionate advocate for gender equality in media. She founded the Gina Davis Institute on Gender in Media, which focuses on increasing the representation and improving the portrayal of women in entertainment. While her presence in films has become less frequent, Davis remains active in her advocacy efforts, using her platform to promote change and inspire future generations. Now 68 years old, she continues to be a respected figure both in Hollywood and in the broader cultural landscape. Bridget Fonda Bridget Fonda, born on January 27, 1964, in Los Angeles, California, 
comes from the illustrious Fonda acting dynasty, which includes her father, Peter Fonda, and her aunt, Jane Fonda. She made a name for herself in the late 1980s and 1990s with her roles in films such as Single White Female, 1992, Point of No Return, 1993, and Jackie Brown, 1997. Fonda's talent and on-screen presence quickly earned her recognition as one of Hollywood's most promising actresses during that era, and her performances left a lasting impact on the industry. As the early 2000s approached, Bridget Fonda began to distance herself from the film industry, choosing to focus on her personal life. Her last significant film role was in The Whole Shebang, 2001, after which she largely stepped away from the spotlight. This decision to retreat from acting was a surprise to many, given her successful career and the legacy she was continuing. Fonda's departure from Hollywood marked the end of an era for her, but her work remains fondly remembered by fans and critics alike. At 60 years old, Bridget Fonda has maintained a low profile, choosing to live away from the public eye. Despite her absence from the screen, her contributions to cinema during her active years continue to be celebrated. Her legacy as part of the Fonda family and as an accomplished actress in her own right endures, leaving a mark on Hollywood that few can replicate, Lili Sobieski. Lili Sobieski, born Lilian Rudabet. Gloria Elzveta Sobieski, on June 10, 1982, in New York City, was a rising star in Hollywood during the late 1990s and early 2000s. She gained widespread recognition for her roles in Deep Impact, 1998, and Eyes Wide Shut, 1999 but it was her portrayal of Joan of Arc in the 1999 miniseries of the same name that earned her critical acclaim and a Golden Globe nomination. Sobieski's ability to deliver emotionally charged performances made her a standout actress at a young age. During the height of her career, Sobieski was seen as one of the most promising young talents in the industry, with roles in films like Never Been Kissed, 1999, and The Glass House, 2001. However, by the mid-2000s, she made the decision to step back from Hollywood, focusing on her personal life and exploring other interests outside of acting. This shift away from the limelight marked a significant change in her career trajectory, and she gradually faded from public view. Today, Lili Sobieski, now 42 years old, has largely stayed out of the entertainment industry only making occasional returns to acting. Her early work continues to be remembered by those who followed her career, and her choice to prioritize her life outside of Hollywood serves as a reminder of the pressures and challenges that come with early fame. Sobieski remains a figure of intrigue, with many still recalling the potential she displayed during her brief but impactful career. Amanda Peterson. Amanda Peterson, Born on July 8, 1971, in Greeley, Colorado, was an American actress who became a prominent face in the 1980s with her role in the teen comedy Can't Buy Me Love, 1987, where she starred opposite Patrick Dempsey. Her portrayal of Cindy Mancini, the popular girl who enters into a fake relationship with an awkward teenager, made her a beloved figure among fans of the era's coming-of-age films. Peterson's natural charm and acting ability suggested a bright future in Hollywood. Despite her early success, Amanda Peterson's career began to decline in the late 1980s. She appeared in a few other projects, including Explorers, 1985, and The Lawless Land, 1988, but she struggled to maintain the momentum she had gained with her breakout role. Personal struggles, including issues related to substance abuse, led her to step away from acting in the early 1990s. Peterson chose to lead a more private life, distancing herself from the industry that had once embraced her. Tragically, Amanda Peterson passed away on July 3, 2015, at the age of 43. Her untimely death shocked many who remembered her from her days as a teen star. Though her time in the spotlight was brief, her performance in Can't Buy Me Love left a lasting impression on 80s cinema 
and she remains fondly remembered by those who grew up watching her on screen. Jackie Avancho Jackie Avancho, born Jacqueline Marie Avancho on April 9, 2000 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is an American singer who first gained national recognition as a young prodigy. She catapulted to fame at just 10 years old when she finished as the runner-up on the fifth season of America's Got Talent in 2010. With her extraordinary vocal talent, particularly in the classical crossover genre, Ivancho captured the hearts of millions and quickly became a household name. Following her breakthrough on America's Got Talent, Jackie Ivancho released several successful albums, including Oh Holy Night, 2010, and Dream With Me, 2011, which showcased her operatic voice and earned her critical acclaim. She continued to perform on various prestigious stages, including the National Christmas Tree Lighting and the Presidential Inauguration in 2017. Despite her young age, Ivancho demonstrated a level of professionalism and talent that was rare, making her one of the most promising young singers of her time. Now 24 years old, Jackie Ivancho has maintained a steady career in music, though her mainstream visibility has lessened compared to the peak of her early fame. She continues to release music and perform for her dedicated fan base, exploring various musical styles while staying true to her classical roots. Ivancho remains a remarkable talent, having achieved more by her mid-twenties than many do in a lifetime, and she continues to evolve as an artist in the world of classical and crossover music. Congratulations on completing one-third of this exploration journey. If you enjoyed this video, please comment 1, otherwise comment 0. We will use this feedback to evaluate and improve our content. Thank you. Meg Ryan Meg Ryan, born Margaret Mary Emily Ann Hyra on November 19, 1961 in Fairfield, Connecticut is an American actress who became one of the most beloved figures in Hollywood during the late 1980s and 1990s. She gained widespread acclaim for her roles in romantic comedies, with her performances in films like When Harry Met Sally, 1989, Sleepless in Seattle, 1993, and You've Got Mail, 1998, cementing her as the quintessential girl next door. Ryan's charming and relatable portrayals made her one of the top box office draws of the era. In addition to her work in romantic comedies, Ryan explored a variety of genres throughout her career, including dramas like Courage Under Fire, 1996, and City of Angels, 1998. Despite her versatility, she became closely associated with the romantic comedy genre, a reputation that both bolstered her career and, eventually, limited her opportunities as Hollywood's tastes evolved. By the early 2000s, Ryan began to step back from the spotlight, focusing more on her personal life and directing projects rather than pursuing high-profile acting roles. Currently, Meg Ryan, now 62 years old, has made a few returns to the screen, but she remains largely private preferring to live out of the public eye. While her film appearances have become less frequent, her legacy as one of the defining actresses of 90s cinema remains strong. Her contributions to the romantic comedy genre continue to be celebrated, and she is fondly remembered by audiences who grew up watching her films. Jay Davidson Jay Davidson, born Alfred Amy on March 21, 1968 in Riverside, California, is a British-American actor and model who gained international fame for his debut role in the critically acclaimed film The Crying Game, 1992. Davidson's portrayal of the enigmatic character Dill, which earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor, was groundbreaking and became a defining moment in early 90s cinema. His performance was lauded for its depth and nuance, making Davidson an overnight sensation. Despite the acclaim and sudden fame, Davidson was uncomfortable with the attention that came with being in the public eye. Following his success in The Crying Game, he appeared in the science fiction film Stargate 1994, where he played the role of Ra, the alien antagonist. 
However, Davidson found the demands of Hollywood overwhelming and decided to step away from acting shortly after. He chose to retire from the film industry, pursuing a private life away from the spotlight and focusing on his work in fashion and modeling. As of 2024, Jay Davidson is 56 years old and has largely retreated from public life, maintaining a low profile. Though his acting career was brief, the impact of his role in The Crying Game remains significant, and his decision to leave Hollywood at the height of his fame has only added to his enigmatic legacy. Davidson's work continues to be remembered for its daring and the unique presence he brought to the screen. Jonathan Taylor Thomas Jonathan Taylor Thomas, born Jonathan Taylor Weiss on September 8, 1981, in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, is an American actor who became a household name in the 1990s. He first captured the hearts of audiences with his role as Randy Taylor on the hugely popular television sitcom Home Improvement, where he starred alongside Tim Allen. His boyish charm, wit, and relatable character made him a favorite among viewers, especially younger fans who saw him as the epitome of the 90s teen idol. In addition to his television success, Thomas found further acclaim in film, particularly as the voice of young Simba in Disney's animated classic The Lion King, 1994. He also starred in family-friendly movies such as Man of the House, 1995, and Tom and Huck, 1995, cementing his status as a leading child actor of his time. However, as he reached his late teens, Thomas made the conscious decision to step away from the limelight to focus on his education, eventually attending Harvard University and Columbia University. Today, Jonathan Taylor Thomas is 43 years old and has largely maintained a low profile since his departure from Hollywood. While he has made occasional guest appearances on television, his focus has remained on his private life and academic pursuits, rather than returning to the entertainment industry full-time. Despite his early exit from the spotlight, his legacy as a 90s icon continues to endure, with many fans still holding fond memories of his work during that era. Josh Hartnett Josh Hartnett, born Joshua Daniel Hartnett, on July 21, 1978, in St. Paul, Minnesota. Paul Minnesota is an American actor who rose to prominence in the late 1990s and early 2000s. He first gained widespread attention with his performances in teen-oriented films such as The Faculty, 1998, and Halloween H20, 20 years later, 1998. His brooding good looks and on-screen charisma quickly earned him a reputation as one of Hollywood's leading young actors, leading to roles in major blockbuster films. Hartnett's career peaked with his performances in Pearl Harbor, 2001, and Black Hawk Down, 2001, both of which showcased his range and solidified his status as a leading man. However, despite his success, Hartnett became disillusioned with the pressures and expectations of Hollywood. In the mid-2000s, he made the conscious decision to step back from mainstream cinema, opting instead to pursue roles in independent films and theater, where he could focus on more diverse and challenging projects. Presently, Josh Hartnett is 46 years old and continues to work in the entertainment industry, though with a much lower profile than during his peak years. He has remained selective about the projects he takes on, often choosing roles that align with his personal interests rather than commercial success. Hartnett's career trajectory reflects his desire to maintain a balance between his passion for acting and his need for personal fulfillment, making him a unique figure in Hollywood's landscape. Frankie Muniz Frankie Muniz, born Francisco James Muniz IV on December 5, 1985 in Woodridge, New Jersey, is an American actor, race car driver, and musician who became a household name in the early 2000s. He is best known for his lead role in the hit television series Malcolm in the Middle, 2000 to 2006, where he played the titular character, a highly intelligent but socially awkward middle child. Muniz's portrayal earned him critical acclaim, including nominations for Emmy and Golden Globe Awards, 
making him one of the most recognizable young actors of his generation. Beyond his success on television, Muniz also ventured into film, starring in popular movies such as Big Fat Liar, 2002, and Agent Cody Banks, 2003. These roles further solidified his status as a leading teen actor in Hollywood. However, as Muniz grew older, he faced significant challenges, including health issues like transient global amnesia, which affected his memory. These struggles led him to gradually step back from acting to explore other interests, particularly in the world of professional race car driving and music. Currently, Frankie Muniz is 38 years old and continues to pursue a variety of passions outside of acting. While he occasionally returns to the screen for guest appearances, his focus has largely shifted to his racing career and music endeavors. Despite the challenges he has faced, Muniz remains a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. Remembered fondly for his work on Malcolm in the Middle and his contributions to early 2000s pop culture. Daniel Day-Lewis Daniel Day-Lewis, born on April 29, 1957, in London, England, is widely regarded as one of the greatest actors of his generation, known for his intense method acting and meticulous dedication to his craft. He first gained international recognition for his performance in My Beautiful Laundrette, 1985, and quickly followed it with another critically acclaimed role in A Room with a View, 1985. However, it was his portrayal of Christy Brown in My Left Foot, 1989, for which he won his first Academy Award, that truly established him as a powerhouse talent in the film industry. Day-Lewis continued to build on his reputation with a series of remarkable performances in films such as The Last of the Mohicans, 1992, In the Name of the Father, 1993, and The Boxer, 1997. Known for his ability to fully immerse himself in his characters, he went on to win two more Academy Awards for his roles in There Will Be Blood, 2007, and Lincoln, 2012. His dedication to his craft often involved long periods of preparation and complete embodiment of the roles he took on, making him one of the most respected and admired actors in the world. In 2017, Daniel Day-Lewis shocked the film industry by announcing his retirement from acting after his final role in Phantom Thread, 2017. Now 67 years old, Day-Lewis has maintained a low profile, staying true to his private nature and avoiding the spotlight. Despite his retirement, his legacy as an actor remains unparalleled with a body of work that continues to influence and inspire both audiences and fellow actors alike. Dave Chappelle Dave Chappelle, born David Kari Weber. Chappelle on August 24, 1973 in Washington, D.C., is an American comedian, actor, and writer who is widely regarded as one of the most influential stand-up comedians of his generation. Chappelle first gained widespread recognition in the early 2000s with his groundbreaking sketch comedy show, Chappelle's Show, which premiered on Comedy Central in 2003. The show became a cultural phenomenon, known for its sharp social commentary, biting satire, and Chappelle's fearless approach to tackling controversial topics such as race, politics, and pop culture. Despite the show's immense success, Chappelle made headlines in 2005 when he abruptly left the show during its third season, citing creative differences and personal issues. His departure led to widespread speculation and marked the beginning of an extended hiatus from the entertainment industry. Chappelle retreated to a quieter life, spending time in Africa and maintaining a low public profile. This unexpected move left fans and critics wondering about his future in comedy. As of 2024, Dave Chappelle is 50 years old and has made a triumphant return to stand-up comedy, delivering a series of highly acclaimed Netflix specials that have solidified his legacy as a master of the craft. 
His work continues to spark conversations and challenge societal norms, making him one of the most respected and relevant voices in contemporary comedy. Chappelle's ability to blend humor with thought-provoking commentary has ensured his place in the pantheon of great comedians, and his influence on the genre remains undeniable. Gene Wilder Gene Wilder, born Jerome Silberman on June 11, 1933, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, was an American actor, comedian, and writer who became a beloved figure in Hollywood for his memorable performances in a series of iconic films. Wilder's career took off in the late 1960s with his role in The Producers, 1968, directed by Mel Brooks, which earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. His collaboration with Brooks continued, leading to classic films such as Blazing Saddles 1974 and Young Frankenstein 1974, where Wilder's unique blend of manic energy and subtle humor made him a standout comedic actor. Wilder is perhaps best known for his portrayal of the eccentric and enigmatic Willy Wonka in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory 1971. His performance in the film became iconic, endearing him to audiences of all ages and cementing his place in cinematic history. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, Wilder continued to captivate audiences with his performances, often teaming up with comedian Richard Pryor in films like Silver Streak, 1976, and Stir Crazy, 1980. However, by the late 1980s, Wilder began to step back from acting, focusing more on writing and other pursuits. Gene Wilder passed away on August 29, 2016, at the age of 83, leaving behind a legacy of timeless performances that continue to resonate with audiences today. His work remains celebrated for its wit, warmth, and originality, and he is fondly remembered as one of the great comedic talents of his era. Wilder's ability to blend comedy with depth and humanity in his roles has ensured that his films continue to be cherished by generations of moviegoers. Joe Pesci Joe Pesci, born on February 9, 1943, in Newark, New Jersey, is an American actor and musician known for his versatile and often intense performances in a wide range of films. Pesci first gained significant attention with his role as Joey LaMotta in Martin Scorsese's Raging Bull, 1980, where his powerful portrayal earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. This role marked the beginning of a fruitful collaboration with Scorsese, leading to some of Pesci's most memorable performances. Pesci became widely recognized for his portrayal of volatile and often violent characters, particularly in films such as Goodfellas, 1990, where his role as the hot-headed gangster Tommy DeVito earned him an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. His work in Casino, 1995, and The Irishman, 2019, further showcased his ability to bring intensity and depth to his characters. Despite his success in such roles, Pessy also demonstrated his range with comedic performances in films like My Cousin Vinny, 1992, and as the bumbling burglar Harry in Home Alone, 1990, and its sequel. By the late 1990s, Pessy announced a semi-retirement from acting, choosing to step back from the industry and focus on his personal life and music career. However, he made notable returns to the screen, including his critically acclaimed role in The Irishman. Today, Joe Pesci is 81 years old and remains a revered figure in Hollywood, with a legacy defined by his intense performances and his unique ability to balance both dramatic and comedic roles with equal skill. Phyllis Diller Phyllis Diller, born Phyllis Ada Driver, on July 17, 1917, in Lima, Ohio, was an American stand-up comedian, actress, and voice artist who broke new ground as one of the first female comedians to achieve widespread success. Diller rose to fame in the 1960s with her distinct comedic style, characterized by self-deprecating humor, exaggerated expressions, and her trademark laugh. She became known for her outrageous fashion, 
complete with wild hair and outlandish outfits, which complemented her stage persona. Diller's career took off with appearances on popular television shows, such as The Tonight Show and Laugh-In. She also headlined her own variety series, The Phyllis Diller Show, 1966 to 1967, which further solidified her status as a comedy trailblazer. Diller's humor often centered on her fictional husband, Fang, and her own perceived flaws, making her relatable to audiences and paving the way for future generations of female comedians. Her ability to make light of domestic life and the struggles of women in a male-dominated society resonated with many, helping her to become a beloved figure in American entertainment. Despite a decrease in her Hollywood presence in later years, Diller continued to perform well into her 80s, making occasional television appearances and lending her voice to animated characters. She passed away on August 20, 2012, at the age of 95. Phyllis Diller's legacy as a pioneering and influential figure in comedy remains strong, and she is remembered for breaking barriers and paving the way for women in the field of stand-up comedy. Her work continues to be celebrated for its humor, originality, and the courage to challenge societal norms through laughter. Jack Gleason Jack Gleason, born on May 20, 1992, in Cork, Ireland, is an Irish actor best known for his chilling portrayal of King Joffrey Baratheon in the acclaimed television series Game of Thrones. Gleason's performance as the cruel and sadistic young king quickly made him one of the most memorable and detested characters on the show, earning him widespread recognition and critical acclaim. Despite his character's intense unpopularity with audiences, Gleason's talent in bringing Joffrey to life was undeniable, making him a standout in the ensemble cast. However, after his role in Game of Thrones came to an end, Gleason made the surprising decision to retire from acting to focus on his academic interests and personal life. He expressed that he never intended to pursue a long-term career in acting, despite the success he achieved at a young age. This unexpected move took him away from the Hollywood spotlight as he chose to lead a quieter life, far removed from the pressures of the entertainment industry. Presently, Jack Gleason is 32 years old and remains largely out of the public eye, with only occasional appearances in smaller theatrical productions and charity work. His decision to step back from acting at the height of his fame has left many fans curious about what could have been, but it has also solidified his status as a unique figure in the entertainment world, one who chose personal fulfillment over continued fame Rick Schroeder. Rick Schroeder, born Richard Bartlett. Schroeder on April 13, 1970, in Brooklyn, New York, is an American actor and director who first gained fame as a child star. He became a household name in the early 1980s for his role as Ricky Stratton on the popular television sitcom Silver Spoons, 1982 to 1987. Schroeder's portrayal of the charming and wealthy young boy endeared him to audiences and made him one of the most recognized child actors of the decade. As he transitioned from child roles to more mature performances, Schroeder successfully took on challenging projects, such as the television miniseries Lonesome Dove, 1989, and the police drama NYPD Blue, where he played Detective Danny Sorensen from 1998 to 2001. These roles demonstrated his ability to evolve as an actor, earning him respect in the industry for his serious and thoughtful approach to his craft. However, as the years progressed, Schroeder's visibility in mainstream entertainment gradually decreased, with him taking on fewer prominent roles. Currently, Rick Schroeder is 54 years old and continues to work in the entertainment industry, albeit with a lower profile than during his peak years. He has also explored directing and producing, expanding his career beyond acting. Although he may not be as widely recognized today as he was during his early career, Schroeder remains an enduring presence in Hollywood, with a body of work that spans over four decades. His early success and later contributions have ensured his lasting impact on the industry. Rick Moranis 
Rick Moranis, born Frederick Allen Moranis on April 18, 1953, in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, is a beloved actor, comedian, and musician best known for his roles in some of the most iconic comedies of the 1980s and early 1990s. Moranis first gained fame as part of the Canadian sketch comedy show SCTV before transitioning to Hollywood, where he became a household name. He starred in a string of successful films, including Ghostbusters, 1984, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, 1989, Spaceballs, 1987, and Little Shop of Horrors, 1986. His unique blend of deadpan humor and everyman charm made him a favorite among audiences. Despite his immense success, Moranis chose to step away from acting in the late 1990s following the death of his wife to focus on raising his children. This decision to prioritize his family over his career was widely respected, and while fans missed seeing him on screen, they admired his commitment to his personal life. Moranis largely retreated from the public eye, only occasionally lending his voice to animated projects or appearing in small roles. Presently, Rick Moranis is 71 years old and continues to live a life mostly out of the spotlight. However, his influence on comedy and film remains strong, with his movies still cherished by fans old and new. Moranis made a brief return to the screen in recent years, which was met with excitement and nostalgia, reminding everyone of his lasting impact on the world of entertainment. His legacy as a comedic actor is firmly established, and he continues to be remembered fondly for his contributions to some of the most beloved films of his era. Brendan Fraser Brendan Fraser, born on December 3, 1968, in Indianapolis, Indiana, is an American-Canadian actor who became one of the most popular leading men in Hollywood during the 1990s and early 2000s. Fraser first gained attention with his role in the comedy Encino Man, 1992. But it was his performances in films like George of the Jungle, 1997, and The Mummy, 1999, that solidified his status as a major star. Known for his good looks, physical comedy, and action hero roles, Fraser became a beloved figure, particularly among fans of adventure and comedy films. Despite his success, Fraser's career faced significant challenges in the late 2000s. He suffered from numerous physical injuries due to the intense stunts required for his action roles, which led to multiple surgeries. Additionally, Fraser faced personal difficulties, including a publicized divorce and struggles within the industry, which contributed to a decline in his on-screen appearances. For a time, Fraser largely disappeared from Hollywood, leaving many to wonder what had happened to the once prominent actor. Today, Brendan Fraser is 55 years old and has experienced a remarkable career resurgence. His performance in The Whale, 2022, earned him widespread acclaim and marked a triumphant return to the spotlight, reminding audiences of his talent and resilience. Fraser's comeback has been met with enthusiasm and support from fans and industry peers alike, solidifying his place as a respected actor who has overcome adversity. His journey from stardom through personal and professional challenges to a celebrated return continues to inspire many, making his story one of perseverance and redemption in Hollywood. Thank you all for being among those who stayed till the end of the video. Comment, too, so we can see you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Famous People channel for more insightful content. We appreciate your participation and look forward to sharing more engaging stories with you in our upcoming videos. Goodbye.